Hello friends, this is Nazmi Can. Today we are going to examine another great victory by former world champion and legendary grandmaster Robert James Fisher. In this game he uses his King's Indian attack in the opening and finishes the game off with a very well known brilliant queen sacrifice. As a Fisher fan, I am always happy to analyze and learn from Fisher's games. Ok, let's go to the moves. Fisher is white and Miyagosuren is black. This game was played in Interzonal tournament in 1967. Fisher opens the game with his usual e4, and black prefers Sicilian defense. Knight f3, e6, and instead of going for the main lines with the move d4, Fisher prefers his favorite weapon, King's Indian attack, with the d3 move, and the idea is to play bishop g2, which is called fianchetto. Knight c6, g3, knight f6, bishop g2, bishop e7. For now, black is staying flexible with his d pawn, he can push d6 or d5 at any moment. After castles, castles, knight bd2, black prefers d5 move here. Fischer has another victorious game after rook b8 against Sherwin in 1957, which is followed like this. In this game, black prefers to place his pawn on d6 square, but this time white creates a pawn center with c3 and d4 moves. But this is another story. d5, now there arises a situation which can be achieved Via different move orders, mainly from French defense. Let's say after e6, if white wants to play King's Indian attack against French defense, he has to play d3 here and d5. Black wants to exchange the queens here in this early phase of the game, and knight b2, d2, preventing that. c5, knight f3, knight c6, g3, knight f6, bishop g2, and we reach the same position as in the game. After castle castles. Okay. Fisher prefers the move rookie one here. E5 also possible, but probably after knight d7, rookie one protecting e5 pawn, queen c7 attacking the e5 pawn. Fisher doesn't want to place his queen on e2 square, and for this reason, he's preparing the move e5 with the move rookie one. B5, e5, and now the center is closed. Both sides have their own plans. In this formation, black wants to attack on the queen side by expanding and creating, try to create some open files there. And white wants to mate his opponent's king by maneuvering his minor pieces there and try to get the black queen into action. Knight f1, b4, h4, both sides um, are making their own plans. a5, black is expanding on the queen side, bishop f4, developing the bishop, and trying to um, reinforce this e5 pawn, a4. And now it's also possible to go um, knight 1h2, as I mentioned, but Fischer made a very useful move on the queen side uh, in order to um, slow the black attack on the queen side by playing a3. A very nice move. But let's see if uh, what happens after knight van h2 if white ignores the black queen side expansion. Then black might play a3 himself. b3 trying to close the queen side but weakens this c3 square. Bishop a6. Rook c1, and black's idea is an action, knight a7, he will try to play uh, knight b5, knight c3. This was a game Bassem Amin against Potkin in Dubai 2014. This was a rapid game, and black eventually win the game after applying some beautiful ideas by black in this position. So Fischer prefers the move a3, trying to slow down black's attack. b takes a3. And now black opens the b-file for his forces. And black played knight a5. A rarely seen option. And nowadays grandmaster play, uh, grandmasters play the move bishop a6. In order to develop bishop. And in some cases trying to prevent white's c4 ideas. In order to um, make this bishop alive on long diagonal. And there is a game between... Peter Swidler and um, Sergei Karyakin in 2014, which went like this. 
knight e3, rook b8, c4 trying to attack the white black center, dc, knight c4, and after knight b6, uh, the game is about equal and eventually drawn after uh, 28 moves. You can check the database to see that game. But black played the move knight a5, knight e3, with the same ideas, trying to uh, not only play knight g4, but also attack by means of c4 probably to get this bishop alive, bishop a6, and Fischer plays the move bishop h3 here, g4, knight f1. It's also possible to play knight g4, but in this case, the queen cannot develop um, via g4 or h5 squares, so knight f1, knight b6, <coughs> and knight g5. White starts action, knight d5, attacking the bishop, bishop d2, black exchanges on g5, bishop takes g5, bishop takes g5, and up to this point, black has a fine game here, and he will try to play c4 and create an attack in the center. Queen h5, rook fc8, logical move, and white um, needs his minor piece on f1, so knight d2 is logical, trying to play knight e4 in the future, and knight d6 or knight f5 threats are there, knight c3, and this move probably a mistake here. Why is that? Because the, the very beautifully placed knight on d5 not only controls important squares like c3, but also um, helps the black king to defend the squares like f6. And in this case, after knight c3, um, as you see, the king has no protection, just the pawns are protecting it. And for this reason, Fischer played the move bishop f6. A very strong move, trying to weaken the black structure on the king's side by sacrificing a piece. Black played the move queen e8, but let's check what happens after g takes f6. e takes f6. And white is trying to mate his opponent with queen invasion on g7. You cannot protect g7 by easy means, so he has to play king h8. And after cold blooded move knight f3, white is threatening both of knight moves knight e5 and knight g5, attacking these both critical squares. And after this, black is almost helpless against white threats. Um, white is attacking with all its forces. On the king side, but queen side, as you see, um, all black pieces are located there, so it's hard to help the black king. So bishop f6, Mia Magursen um, doesn't take the bishop, queen e8, he's trying to um, prepare the move queen f8 after queen g5 move, knight e4 trying to attack and if black exchanges he will take with the rook and attack with the rook also g6 black is preparing the moves if queen h6 then queen f8 repelling the white's attack so for this reason fisher plays queen g5 when preparing the move h5 softening up the king side pawns knight takes e4 rook takes e4 and it's too late for black to create counterplay on the queen side and he starts it with c4 move. And now white goes with its plan with h5 trying to soften up the um, king side. c takes d3 and it's possible to take on d3 here but probably calculating all the variations to the end Fischer goes for the throat here. Rook h4 trying to mate his opponent down the h-file, rook a7, trying to um, create some defensive possibilities on the 7th rank with his rook, namely if you take on g6, black wants to take with f-pawn and now white attack is gone here, probably nothing there. So Fischer has to attack energetically here in order to 
um, destroy black structure on the queen side. And he plays bishop g2 move. Ignoring the threat on the pawn c2, he wants to play bishop e4 at some point. d takes c2, and here arises the most um, famous combinations ever, one of the most combinations ever, and you might stop your video in order to um, try to find the best moves for yourself here. And now Fischer plays the move Queen H6, which apparently can be met by the move Queen F8 because he's threatening to mate on G7. But after Queen F8, Fischer has a big surprise for his opponent, which is a brilliant Queen sacrifice here. Queen takes H7, brilliant move. Black. Resigned here, but let's um, look further. King takes h7. H takes g, double attack on the king. If he goes here, then it's mate in one after rook h8. So he has to take, but this will not last long after bishop e4. It's also mate in one. A brilliant game by Fischer. And illustrating some very nice points about Kings in attack opening. So, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.